Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Aditya and I post technical videos to help you stay ahead in the world of technology. In today's video, we are diving into a hands-on tutorial on Selenium, the powerful tool for web automation. In just 15 minutes, you'll learn how to set up Selenium, write your first test script and run it across different browsers. Whether you are a beginner or looking to brush up on your skills, this tutorial is packed with practical tips and real-world examples to get you started quickly. So, grab your favorite code editor and let's automate web together. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with my latest tech tutorials. Let's get started. And here we go. So, I'm going to open Visual Studio on my computer. That should take a while. I'm gonna create a new project and here I'm going to look for an unit. So I have a couple of an unit test projects. I'm gonna select the C sharp one and give the project name as Learn Selenium. Keep the location and everything default framework dot net 8 works cool now this creates a project for us and this is what we land up I'm gonna select the project right click and go into NuGet packages and straight into the NuGet packages I'm gonna search or under the browse tab for selenium so selenium web driver is so here we have it selenium web driver i'm gonna do an install on this okay cool let's apply So that's done. So now I need to use the namespaces from the package I just added to my project. So I'm gonna use openaqa.selenium and then also I'm gonna use methods from openqa.selenium.chrome. Now I'm gonna create a fresh set of class inside my namespace learn selenium. So what I'll do is I'll clear this up. Uh, let's create an internal class. Uh, I'll call it simple test for now. And inside it, I'm going to create a public void function. So simple test is going to be, the, let's that keep that as the name of the class or name of the function as well. And uh, let's start with our line of codes. So first of all, I'm going to define a variable driver and it's going to be a new instance of chrome driver from selenium.chrome then i'm gonna do driver.manage.window.size equal to new system dot drawing dot size 1920 comma 1200 so I'm just gonna make the size of the browser that pops up not a variable or depending on one what system you're running but explicitly define it and then uh, I'll just do navigate dot go to URL so I'll uh, let's stick with 
google.com so what this line of code will do the the browser that pops open and now explicitly has 1920 comma 1200 as the dimensions of the browser it will open up with the url google.com so there we have it the basic setup now to do anything on the browser i'll call the function find element on driver and as argument i'll pass by the name of the id that i'm trying to uh, find the element on the page so find element by id and here goes a string of of the id of the element html element on the browser so uh, first of all i'll quickly download google chrome on my computer so there we have this install and great it will take some time so here we have it chrome uh, let's stay signed out and then we have okay got it so now we have the google opened what I want to do is I want to inspect inspect this page and uh, I'll go to element selector over here and select the search tab and I can see the HTML code ID is input so let's put that so I want to select the element with ID input on the page google.com on browser chrome and after selecting it I want to send keys so basically it's equivalent to typing on your keyboard and let's send Aditosh YouTube so that's that's us that's the channel and uh, after we have typed this we want to hit search button so what we can do is driver dot find element by the ID of the search button and then dot click instead of dot send keys so I need the ID for the search button now. So let's go back, head back to the browser and let's find the ID for this. So I never realized Google doesn't have a search button. We only have like, we always just press enter. So here we go. I'll comment this out because we are not clicking anything because there is no button to click on. Instead, what we want to do is we want to uh, hit enter after typing our words on the Google. So I'll include another package from Selenium library under the namespace interactions. And uh, I'll make a call to or pass an argument as keys.enter which is valid under selenium.interactions and it will send enter as a key. Now we have an error here. So first of all, we want to define an unit project, just test on the top. I'll rename the class as simple test. So it's no longer the issue with the function name because it was acting like a constructor and it was causing error. So we look good, everything looks good. There are no red lines anymore. Uh, in order to run the test, you can go to test and here we have test explorer. And once you click on this, this window pops over and it shows the test. Um, you can run it by right clicking it. And that should pop out the browser. Let's see. So here the Chrome is, it says Chrome is being controlled by automation test software and nothing happens. We are not typing anything. Let's head back to Selenium. Oh, I see the test cases have failed. So we can dock it and I'll put this on the left side of our Visual Studio. And uh, always remember to do driver.quit. So once the automation is completed, let's quit the driver so that it's not running on 
the process in behind in the background jobs and consuming your resources so it's always a good idea to do driver.quit and it's a standard and you should do it so i believe the issue is or the error with our test failing is that it's not able to find the id input and that makes sense google has a lot of ids maybe there are multiple ids with input and it doesn't know which input we are talking about um, and we didn't make Google, so I'm not sure what exactly ID we are targeting to actually identify that search. So what I'm going to do is instead of hitting Google, let's run a local application where we have written the HTML code and we have much more control and then using ID select our search button and do the automation. So here I am on uh, my local project, which is running on localhost with this project is a node.js project uh, written in react and uh, i have added the search uh, input box id as search box and uh, click button id as click button so search box and click button are the ids on our localhost app so what i'm going to do is now we are not going to google.com instead let's head to localhost uh, also let's remove the unused libraries we are not going to send keys anymore uh, let's do find by element by find element by id and let's pass the id from our local app so that's search box and let's send keys in the search box as ducks i don't know that sounds good um, and once we have typed that let's do driver dot find element by id and this time we want the id of the click button so i'm gonna head back and just copy it out and drop it here and dot click so we, we want to select that click button and click on it um so everything looks good uh, and just we need to do, do at the localhost at 3000 port on the url so let's do that let's run the test so yes and it succeeded and we didn't see anything it happened so fast so let's uh, introduce threading from system and this will allow us to control our threads so we can pause the thread to better understand what's happening because the test passed but we didn't see if anything actually happened so uh, i'm gonna make the thread sleep for five seconds And ducks and loading it means ducks was pressed generate was pressed five second it holds and then it cuts out so it's let's make sure it's five seconds and not 50 seconds and before and after there's a five second hold so let's do that now so five seconds it's not doing anything types ducks clicks on generate and then five seconds and browser closes and nothing fails everything passes so this is just that you're head first into actually getting your hands on selenium on dotnet core dotnet 8 and now you actually know how it feels to or what practically it's like using selenium but this is not the way you'll be using tests failing uh, or succeeding open-endedly without anything happening is not a good practice we, you will usually want to add assert statements at the very bottom where you are asserting the response and checking or validating if things are working as expected when you perform a certain set of activities and only if those assert success succeed we show uh, the test case as a success if the assertion fails it means something happened that we didn't expect and the test fails that's the usual way and we are not done yet 
let's take it up a notch so uh, that's the very basic we saw but that's not ideally the way you want to be programming on when you are using selenium for your service uh, which is a huge product i'm assuming you would want to manage it more or in a more professional manner so let's take a look into how we are supposed to or what are the guidelines for project organization or management when you are writing selenium test cases so remember we are using an unit project and inside that we are just using the selenium library but the an unit project itself gives us attributes like one time setup setup tear down one time tear down so how does that help us is we do a one time setup and it's just a code that's written on a certain place and that involves the logic to log into your portal it involves the credits and everything how you want to log in which with which credits you want to log in and you can just keep it as a one time setup that will be run every time a test case is running so one time setup will always happen and you don't have to replace uh, repeat it everywhere then you have setup so once you have logged in you might want to go to a certain page then the simple test is like a test you want to do a simple test it may be with some assertion it might not be it could be anything and then you want to do the tear down that's making sure you are exiting properly and then one time tear down it's like you are logging out and everything you are cleaning up whatever you did ensuring that so that's a one time tear down that runs after all the tests or every test and lastly take some time over this to understand or see at an example of how setup and tear down might be used and that's a wrap on our hands on selenium tutorial i hope you found this session helpful and that you are now more confident in automating web tasks with selenium if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and share it with others who might benefit Don't forget to su subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. If you have any questions or need further clarifications, feel free to drop a comment. I'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching and happy coding. Bye bye.